concrete is produced in two automatic mixing plants. Extensive investigations were necessary in order to achieve the required concrete quality with the crushed rock aggregates from the quarry. Work is carried out in three shifts in order to keep on program. A section of a key wall is being concreted at night. For all the structures, a total of 500,000 cubic meters of concrete will have to be produced. As far as possible, both bar and mesh reinforcement is prefabricated in the main steel bending yard and then transported to the construction site. Specially designed climbing forms made in large steel panels are being used. Most of the workers are local Zulus. They've readily learned the necessary skills. Cooperation between Europeans and Africans is excellent. Work is also progressing rapidly on the 1400 meter long clean cargo berth. The reinforced concrete buttress wall is divided by expansion joints into 30 meter long sections, each containing 3,300 cubic meters of concrete. Each section is divided into seven lifts, base, five wall lifts, and mass capping. Whilst the formwork is still being erected for the upper lifts, backfilling has already started lower down. Each operation overlaps the next, and section for section, the wall is growing towards completion. In one area, the clean cargo berth had to be founded on a caisson owing to bad soil conditions. The caisson was sunk 35 meters by excavating the soil in the working chamber. works for the new harbour not only include difficult foundations, massive key walls and extensive earth moving operations, but also the erection of many other structures, all of which have to be completed on time. For instance, the tidal control structure. This is located in the berm wall which divides the harbour from the remainder of the lagoon and is constructed in a large open pit. The structure is founded on reinforced concrete driven piles. There are two weirs, each with a 40 meter wide opening. The road and dual track railway along the berm wall will be carried over the weirs by pre-stressed concrete bridges. The 40 meter long pre-stressed concrete hollow box beams are precast at bridge level and then moved sideways into their final position. A few months later, the tidal control structure is in operation and is regulating the difference in water levels between the harbour and the remainder of the lagoon. Thus, one of the major requirements of the overall project has been fulfilled. The remainder of the lagoon has been preserved in its original state and is once again free for water sports and fishing. Apart from the deep water harbour, 
there will also be a small harbour for small vessels and service craft. This small harbour will include 650 metres of key wall for 8 metre water depth and a further 400 metres of key wall for 4 metre water depth. Tugs, pilot boats, firefighting vessels and coasters will be able to berth here later. Four years have now passed since construction started. The 800 meter long coal berth is completed. The excavation is being flooded. The first coal freighter will soon moor onto these massive fenders. For the wall capping with the two service ducts, a combination of in situ and precast concrete was chosen. The purpose built travelling formwork has reached the final section. Backfilling the key wall is in full swing. The soil is pumped behind the wall by suction dredges. plant is used to level off the fill. Much has been accomplished in the last few years and some still remains to be done. But this big project is visibly nearing completion. Europeans and South Africans of different races involved in the construction have created a lasting monument to their teamwork. Careful planning, willingness of all those involved and close cooperation between the consortium and the client give every reason for Richards Bay Harbour to be completed on time. Richards Bay has grown into a small township in the meantime and is very pleasant to live in. Also, industrial development has started to take place around the harbour. In the new industrial area, an aluminium works has been built and uses the harbour to import raw material. In early April 1976, the first berth was officially opened exactly on programme. Since then, coal trains have been in service along the berm wall into the harbour. Unloading the coal is carried out with the most modern equipment. Controlled by photocells, two trucks at a time are emptied automatically. Underground conveyors take the coal to the storage areas. Afterwards, the next two trucks are moved into the unloading position hydraulically. The coal stockpiles are growing into mountains. The new Richards Bay Harbour is already functioning properly. Ships are coming and going from all ports of the world, laden with general cargo and coal. A new harbour can be added to the shipping charts. Richards Bay. <laughs>